Well, folks, we had some really important elections take place tonight, and I wanted to get to the results. Um, I think that you already know, if you're watching this video, that it wasn't a great night for Democrats or progressives. And the race that I was watching the closest was the mayoral race in Buffalo, New York, between India Walton and Byron Brown, which in theory should have been over when she defeated him in a Democratic Party primary, but as you all know, he launched a sore loser writing campaign. So we learned the results of that race tonight. But first, I want to get to the gubernatorial race in Virginia, because the ramifications for that are pretty broad. It sends a huge message about the Democratic Party and how it's looking come 2022, and not good, because in the race between Terry McAuliffe, the Democrat, and Glenn Youngkin, the Trump Republican, well, it's been called for Glenn Youngkin, who narrowly defeated Terry McAuliffe, and he did not run a substantive campaign. It was all culture war nonsense, uh, critical race theory this, cancel culture that, and it was enough. He elevated the salience of those non-issues in voters' minds because the Democrat didn't run a substantive campaign. This is a corporate Democrat who's an ally with the Clintons. Terry McAuliffe was a governor of Virginia before, and I guess that Democrats didn't have anyone else to put up. And um, the Democrat lost because not enough people were inspired, perhaps in that race, or just nationally by Democrats, because look at what's going on right now. But you're not going to be surprised to learn that um, it's the left who's being blamed for Terry McAuliffe's loss. Heather Cagle tweets out, Dem members are already texting me blaming progressives for debacle in Virginia. And Blake Hounshell tweets out, Some in Biden land are already asking themselves if the president has allowed himself to be tugged too far to the left while in office, and those voices are likely to get louder now. So of course, when all else fails, blame the left. It's their fault, not the fault of the corporate Democrat. Now, it's not just the left who's getting blamed, because on MSNBC, according to Chip Gibbons, they are blaming uh, increasing likely Democratic loss in Virginia on Biden withdrawing from Afghanistan. <laughs> so, I mean, it just, you see so many weird rationalizations here. None of them are based on policy substance whatsoever. I do want to get to demographics here, because as Crystal Ball says, the wine mom giveth and the wine mom taketh away. Because as Sahil Kapoor tweets out, Virginia in 2020, white women, 50% voted for Biden, 49% for Trump. But in 2021, white women went for Yunkin, 57% to 43%. That's a 15-point swing to the GOP in this group. So that's just a small hint of what we can expect in 2022. If there's already this big of a swing in at least this one state, I am expecting a bloodbath for Democrats in 2022. So they should use this time very wisely. Make sure they do uh, electoral reform in the form of uh, banning partisan gerrymandering. Make sure you do voting rights reform. They're not going to do that. And as a result, they're going to get wiped out. And Trump is likely going to win again in 2024. But before I get too ahead of myself, I do want to get to the race in Buffalo. So when it comes to third party candidates and write in campaigns, they usually don't win because we have a first pass the post winner-take-all majoritarian electoral system. And once you win a primary, if the district leans in your party's direction, you're going to win. So I think that it was reasonable to assume that India Walton was the favorite to win. The problem is that in this sore loser write-in campaign that Byron Brown ran, his campaign was funded by Republican donors. He had big money on his side. And guess what? Even if he was running a write-in campaign, it paid off because it looks as if Byron Brown is going to defeat India Walton 59 to 41%. Now, at the time that I record this, the race has yet to be called. There's still uh, less than 70% of precincts reporting. Uh, so I'll post the final results if I have it by the time this video goes up. But this proves that this notion of Democratic Party unity is a fucking sham. It goes one way. And that's not in progressives' favor. Unity means if a progressive loses in a Democratic Party primary, you shut the fuck up, fall in line, and endorse the progressive uh, or endorse the uh, person who beat the progressive. But when uh, the corporate Democrat loses, it's fine. You don't have to uh, 
try to unify everyone. You don't have to rally support for the opponent who beat you. You can run a sore loser campaign and take Republican money and win somehow. It's sad because this isn't just about Buffalo in my view. I think we desperately need a leader, a national leader to, leader to emerge on the left. And India Walton was someone who I viewed with potential. But now it appears as if it's over. I don't know what happens next. I hope that she stays engaged and maybe she runs for Congress or something. But Byron Brown ran a write-in campaign and he defeated India Walton. It goes to show you that with big money, anything is possible. Even overcoming our electoral system, which is a two-party slanted system. So I can't pretend as if I'm surprised because I knew that the deck was stacked against India Walton. Even if this is a write-in campaign, he had a catchy slogan, write down Brown, and he had money, most importantly. But on top of that, to see the way that corporate Democrats and Democratic Party loyalists will deflect when it comes to the gubernatorial race in uh, Virginia. <sighs> I mean, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to pretend to be like super exasperated and flustered because I knew that this would be the case. Again, whenever it's convenient, they're going to blame us um, and they're going to come to the wrong conclusion, even if they don't blame us. They're going to assume that maybe they uh, moved too far to the left or wasn't uh, corporatist enough or, or didn't lean into the culture war issues, and also condemn critical race theory in our schools. Either way, uh, this is really bleak shit, but it's it's kind of predictable. Uh, we live in a system that is fundamentally broken to its core, and things just continue to get worse. And even when we have a small opportunity to fix some of the issues, Democrats completely bungle it. And this shows that voters aren't enthusiastic about what they're doing. I think that this, in a way, is a temperature check for how, you know, uh, voters, more broadly speaking, feel about the Democratic Party nationally. And Joe Biden should see this as a wake-up call, but odds are he probably won't. So either way, um, I'm going to try to not let this get me too down, even though I think it's inevitable the more that I think about it, but I'm going to try to distract myself. And I encourage you to to do the same as well, because, you know, it's... <laughs> It's America, right? So you can always expect the dumbest thing to be the likely outcome. And that was the case here in both of these races.